Hi again and welcome back to my channel. So this video today, what are we going to be talking about? Well, this is something I've touched on a few times uh, in the past, possibly a year ago or so. I did some videos on this kind of stuff. And it seems the, uh, the kind of older I get um, and the more experience I get. I always say every day is a school day. You know, all this music experience that, that, that I'm, I've, I've got and I'm, st I'm still getting, I can't help but think sometimes, you know, as musicians, certainly as drummers, because musicians are drummers, as we know, so people like to do that thing, um, that um, when we're playing the instrument, you know, are, are we really aware, are we listening to everything that's going on around us? Now, I know that sounds a bit silly. <clears throat> of course we do. We're playing, you know, in, in time. We're responding to changes within the music. Uh, all, all, you know, all that kind of stuff is really important. And I know we do, you know, when to start, we know when to finish. We, you know, we, if we stop in the middle, if we need to, you know, the arrangement stuff, that's all one thing, but actually playing the music. Now, at some point, somebody might start turning off now going, oh, here he goes, getting all ethereal and hippie-ish again. Um, but but it, it's something that I think is really important. And I'm working on it for myself all of the time. Uh, I've said before, there's like TDK cassettes, if you remember those, around uh, and um, that tapes I've got here and, uh, you know, probably some vinyl here from the very early days of me, you know, overplaying, playing good drums, but am I playing good music? Now, I'd like to think yes, and I never got fired or anything, but along those, the journey, you know, I have people telling me certain things. You know, so like I made a really great EP with um, The Deep Six. And I'm very proud of that. And you can't stream that anywhere, I don't think. Um, I'll have to check. But the playing on that record, when I listen to it, I'm proud of it. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, would I do it differently now? And the answer would be yes. So I guess some of it is experience. So we can't keep balancing um, that and saying, oh, it's definitely this. Because obviously experience comes in and anything. OK, well, that brings it a bit more to a level point. Um, so there are periods of time when I was doing that and I'm not saying it was wrong. It was set in stone on that cassette or album or that or whatever, or video, VHS. Um, and it's there as, a, as part of my learning process. But the, yeah, the point is we grow and we develop. So there is that. So I'm aware of that. So I, I know those kind of things balance out. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at a scenario where sometimes if I go to jam sessions and I'm playing with other musicians and there's clearly a point in the music where... You know, the soloist or the singer, whatever's happening, whoever's leading the party at that point, you know, starts to come down. And, and if you've got a microphone, they tend to do this, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, something's happening. They're sort of coming down or if they look at you and do a certain hand signal or whatever. Um, and same with guitarists or, or any, you know, tuned instrument player. They, they, there's certain things that happen and uh, that there's certain cues. And if they start playing quieter and you can't hear them, the first rule is, as a drummer, would be, you would think, to come down and match that volume and see what's going on. And as I say, that doesn't always happen. There's this thing that we're a drummer, we've got to be consistent, this happens, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's fine if that's what's needed on that song. But on something like a jam session where you're improvising and, you know, working together and just feeling your way, that's a really good stomping ground for developing your musical ear. Got to... Um, and one in here and one there. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a really good experiment and it's a good um, test is the wrong word, you know. And as I say, this isn't about picking on certain individuals and people. It's just like anybody watching this who plays any instrument can probably get something from it because it's about playing music. Um, I have this running thing with certain friends, you know, that technique is everything. And goodness knows I do enough videos showing things, bits of my playing that I'm proud of and I stitch together musically, blah, blah, blah. So that's clearly technique. Um, but what I'd like to think is I'm using it in a musical way. Again, that's kind of subjective, but that's that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Now, when I'm playing music with other musicians, me on a drum kit, me on a pad, that's kind of subjective. But if I'm playing a situation and um, in the music it called for it to go quiet. I'm not still playing at the same volume blah, 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 and steaming through it. I'm listening and thinking, right, so-and-so's come down. So, hey, maybe that's a moment. We should all come down. Then everyone comes down. But certain people sort of like, well, I've started, so I'm going to finish. And they just sell through it. Um, 
and I'm not saying that anyone should be there with a, a, a sort of clipboard and a checklist, but, but, you know, mentally we should be thinking, well, if I can no longer hear that soloist or the singer, maybe I'm too loud. Um, and if everyone's looking at me with their hands like this on their sides, maybe I've lapped them with the tempo. <laughs> maybe I've left them behind or I'm dragging or whatever. These kind of things are just really important. And um, they're not like technique things, they're musical things. You know, I, I, I've been around musicians that have done it. I've done it, as I say, so I'm not, pff, I'm guilty of this. I listen to things and I go, oh, what was I thinking? Well, I wasn't, that's it, I wasn't thinking. You know, I, was, I wasn't thinking with my heart, I was thinking with my head. I wasn't listening, you know, I was just like, right, I've got this job to do and kind of tunnel vision. I wasn't listening to what's going on around me. And I think um, improvised music is good for that. Now I know not everyone's into improvised music or um, don't like their rock music with lots of guitar solos or they don't like jazz because of all the soloing. And I get that, that that's totally fair enough. Not everyone's bag and they think it's gratuitous and all that business, which really it isn't. But again, subjective, that's, that's all I, opinions to be had. But there is something really good about playing improvised music and jamming because you have to react. And that's one thing that playing, you know, uh, whatever style of music uh, you, you play, playing that over and over as a set list or, or, or pieces if you play classical music um, and big band stuff or whatever, you know, that, that isn't the same. That's responding to something that's written, which is amazing. And it's a very, wish I could sight read really well, I can't. Pfft but my heart doesn't want me to <laughs> because my heart's more like, I'm looking at it going, oh, well, this is great, but ooh, I could develop this. And by that, that time that's happened, it's moved on to the next section and I've left it behind um, or they've left me behind. Uh, and I know that's not where I'm at. Um, in that gig, you've just got to play what's there, the best of your ability, move on. Don't think about how nice that phrase is or is it feeling good? No time for that. You've just got to skip on to the next thing. You know, and that isn't where my my heart is at at all with music so getting you know people to, to, to even those people in that world to go along and play it's a different it's a different experience for them and uh and I think for the people I'm talking about which is you know the drummers and stuff that watch this and hopefully other musicians um but, but being able to think like that on your feet is really good without just stopping and going I don't know what I'm doing being able to respond that's that to me is kind of real music that's what I think you know the human being emoting um, on the spot, not written down or pre-planned, um, being able to work in that environment, you know, and everything in the brain is firing so fast and you're responding to all, all of this movement and change is uh, it's a really good lesson. Obviously ensemble playing, dead important, get people playing together, you know, whether it's reading the dots or just knowing a piece and then playing it, that's important too. Goodness, that's so important. But there is something about the general sort of music, um, taking the theory away a minute, just the, the general response uh, and respond time to what's happen happening around you, you know, is something that I'm always keen for my students to be aware of. Uh, and any musicians that talk to me, you know, at clinics or master classes or whatever, uh, I put that across because I think it's really, really important. And I think it's easy to sort of, uh, sort of poo poo that, that kind of music for more theory-based stuff, which you can prove because it's written, da, 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 da. there is something about this side that I think is just as important. So us drummers can be a little bit guilty, again, me included, of uh, working so much on a particular pattern with our hands or our feet or both, and we're playing 11 this side and five this side, and we don't actually stand back and say, what does it actually sound like? Now, it's a good technique building thing, good for your limbs, good for your independence, coordination, all those skills, very important. So it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm really, you know, trying not to. But um, is it musical? When you stand back, could you play it in a song? No, now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't practice it, as I say. But sometimes I hear people knocking out things like that over, like a classic thing would be going to see a wedding band and, and they're like, oh, this is a Stones track, so I'll do something a bit more interesting in this. And it's like, no, no, hang on a minute. Yes, we can as an experiment, good. Your musical brain is firing, your technique's coming out, you're showing how you can play and it's great, Pfft, no mistake. But the flip side is that, are you playing the, the music? Are you playing that song or are you just playing at the song? Do you see what I mean? There's two different things. So when, when I'm working now with artists, I always go in with the simplest structure, drum wise. I'm always happy when people say, Rob, add more to it. That's really straightforward. I want to hear that rather than, Rob, you're playing too much. Whoa, whoa, we've lost my song, mate. 
you've got no idea where, you know, what you, what you think is a ballad. You know, when you're playing double kicks, <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's the, I, I want that response of like, add more to it, please. What else can you bring to it? And of course, in my music, I've got loads of ideas and I've written things out, you know, a bit keen, I'm a bit keener like that. So I've got um, possible things that I'd like to do, which is always good, you know, to have those extra things you can add into the song. And sometimes I just scribble them out and think they weren't needed. No one saw that. So, yeah, so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, you know, us drummers, let's, 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 just be a little bit more musical if we can. Now, as I say, I'm not pointing fingers. It's just, I think it's something we can be aware of. It's always good constantly to go back into, um, oh, a DW email. They're supplying a new stall, hey, for the upcoming Arena McKinney tour. Um, it, you know, it, it's it's always good to, to, to be um, present and to be playing, but it's almost like we have to develop skills and it's skills where we stand sort of outside of ourselves and, and then look at it. You know, when we're recording, we can do it in real time. Just stand up in the studio, in the control room, we can hear back and you think, yeah, I can hear what I've just done. Live, sometimes you can't do that. And um, you know, I've had to go up to students sometimes and say, you know, on this section here, you know, and they can clearly hear it or see it if it's been filmed. And I say, look at what's happening in the, in the ensemble now. And, and instantly they're like, oh my God, what? <laughs> I was so sort of like in my space, I wasn't thinking about the, the, the overall vibe, you know, and, and, and they're like, God, simple. So it's not like, you know, a pointing finger thing. It's just like, it's kind of obvious. And I've had it happen to me, as I say, countless times. And I didn't see the wood for the trees because when once I was in the groove or whatever, I never saw that. Um, or if I was too busy, you know, kind of knitting together the ideas I wanted to get across instead of thinking, I just need to stick with the groove and see what develops. You know, because sometimes when you do that, I think it was Peter Erskine that said, just let the music tell you what it needs. And um, I love that idea. I love on a jazz ballad, for instance, with the old brushes there, just playing away and hardly doing anything. And then when you do make a little statement, it means more than doing lots of little statements throughout the whole piece. And you could put that to a, any style of, you know, rock drumming or reggae drum, whatever you want to talk about. You can put that same thing in and you should try it, you know your brain will be telling you to add extra notes all the time on the bass or the snare or play a phrase or fill, but try not to, try and steer through it and think, okay. And then once you get used to this kind of mentality of just more focusing on bringing the music in rather than what you're doing, you know, be confident with what you're doing once it's learned, of course, you need to learn your bits, but then let the music kind of seep in and you're part of that structure. You're no longer, oh, that's the bass player, that's, that's guitarist, the keyboard. It's like, whoa, you're sort of in your head, you're all together. Like, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a real, really cool concept. And when you start playing like that and just playing the music, you might suddenly listen back and go, I don't need that feel there or phrase. I don't need it. I just need to keep playing. That feels awesome. You know, it's, it's, it's those kind of things that, um, that I know experience brings. But if some young players are watching this, you might just want to get into that idea a little bit easier. And if you've ever heard a song, and thought, well, I would have put a fill in here. And if there isn't one in there, that's good that you thought of it. First of all, brilliant. And you should play it and you maybe make a drum cover video out of it. Nothing wrong with that. But then there's the other flip side. We think, right, there wasn't a fill there because it didn't need it. The song was being held for whatever reason, you know, by the mood, the tempo, the vibe, whatever it might have been. That was the thing that was making it happen. So the arranger, band leader, singer, engineer, producer, whoever, record exec, didn't say, we need a fill there to make it happen. It clearly didn't need it. But as I say, it doesn't mean we can't think that ourselves and rearrange it in our heads. But when we're looking and we're in that sort of mindset of, I would have done something there, try and step back a little bit and think, there is a reason why there's something not there. So thank you for watching. It's kind of a, a long one for me, 15 minutes or so, because I'm trying to make them shorter. But this is a concept I could talk about all day. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And, you know, you can uh, email me or put your thoughts and stuff below. Um, and uh, let me know if you've had any experiences of this or if you agree, disagree, or, you know, how you work on that yourselves. Because, uh, you know, obviously I don't know everything. And Steve Gadd doesn't even know everything. You know, we're all we're all of us are learning. And I've uh, been listening to a lot of Vinny Coluta podcasts lately and, and video clips on YouTube. And there's a lot of wisdom there and I'm really enjoying how he openly admits how he's changed over the years and his concepts and stuff. And it's made me more aware of mine, really. So instead of looking at them as, oh, that wasn't very good, I look at it as I was learning. That's where I was then. That's a perfect snapshot of Rob Bryan in 1992 or 91, a bit like that picture behind me, wherever it is, um, playing at the Bell 
uh, Oak with a band called Burn, who I'll talk about another time. Um, and it wasn't a Deep Purple tribute band being called Burn. It was like a funk band and it was brilliant. And a lot of the guys in that band went on to do great things, but save that for another day when I talk about that picture, which I said I'd do the other day and I still haven't done it. Um, and, and playing all these fills and, and it's just, yeah, it's just where I was then. So it's not a question of looking back and going, ooh, it's just getting this sort of thought process that you're maturing and you're growing up and you're hearing music very, 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 very differently. And as I say, I find minimalistic music like Philip Glass and Steve Reich very, uh, very inspiring in that way where there's no drums uh, and it was just all the other instruments taking care of the syncopation, which sounds a daft thing to say, but you know, you could play like a dance groove through some of those things and it'd really work because it's that groovy, but using like more classical instrumentation. And then whilst listening to the different parts and how they crossed over with this polyrhythmic stuff, I suddenly, this is about 15, 20 years ago, suddenly dawned on me, it's like, blimey, I'm missing something within the band. You know, a bass line just isn't a bass line. It's a whole thing that's weaving into the song. I'm not looking at it as the notes and the tuning. It's like, what's it doing to the music? And I guess that in a nutshell, that's what I'm saying as part of this is being aware of what's in that structure, you know, um, what's woven into that tapestry. So many different ways we could say it. Um, but just really interesting and you can develop this with your listening and then you can obviously develop it with your playing. So there you go. I'm going to finish there because as I say, I could be here all day talking about this. Um, keep liking, keep subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the bing notification bell so you know when I'm posting these kind of drumming rambles and things. So I hope you're well and uh, I'll get this posted and I'll see you next time.